what, what the mate is talking about. Yeah. What's up, family? Oh, man, we about to get busy. Waiting on my guest, Christian Jones, a.k.a. The Truth Jones, young investor, entrepreneur, 13 years old, fam. Can you believe the young brother is doing his thing? If you want to know about investing, if you want to know about entrepreneurship, if you want to get ahead of the curve and get to the money, I got a young guy who's already doing it and he's going to show you how to do it. He's going to tell you how to do it. He can show you how to do it if you take his course, but he's going to tell you about how he's going to give you some tips on how to go about that. Here he is right now. Let's see. Waiting on the truth. Not to be confused with trade truth. <laughs> What's up? What's up, young soldier? Not much. Staying busy. How about yourself? Staying busy. That's what, that's, you know what I'm saying, man. 13 years old. I, I, don't, I don't recall ever telling somebody staying busy when they asked me how was I doing. <laughs> you know, I don't recall ever saying staying busy. But that's super cool. Hold on. I, I think I got a glare. So let me try to see if I can do something about this glare. Uh, see if I can adjust my camera too. There we go. Mm. Let's see, let's see, let's see. I'm moving it, but I'm getting a little bit too much movement. Maybe I can do this, cheat a little bit. All right, maybe that's the best I can do for right now. Okay, so first of all, man, how in the hell did you get into investing at such an early age? Where did you get this drive from? I would say I got the drive for, or even just the passion from investing. It really yeah. just came from seeing a peer of mine. It was actually a, a video of a 14-year-old black boy out of Chicago who had made $50,000 of buying, well, Nike stock. And like any business owner, because I was around eight, nine years old at the time, Right. So like any business owner, I wanted to learn, of course, well, how he made that $50,000 and, well, how I can do that too. So <laughs> I began asking my mom if she could teach me how to invest in the stock market because I heard, well, I didn't know anything about the stock market. This is my first time hearing about it. Right. So I asked her if she could teach me. And initially, well, she said no, and um, mostly because she didn't think I was going to take it seriously and I wasn't going to well, really just put in the work. And I was just saying that, like the next day I could come out and say, I want to be a car salesman or do real estate or something. I was right. just saying right. that. But right. unbeknownst to her at the time, I was actually serious about learning this skill. And when she told me though, I decided, well, I'm going to do my own research and find out what I can about the stock market. Right. So I began well, doing just that. And eventually I came back to her and told her I wanted to open up my brokerage account, which is the account you use in order to invest and trade yourself. And how so old I came were you back at that time? Around how old, how old eight years old, transition to nine. Eight years old? Yes. You doing your own research? Yes. Good God. Come on, man. I'm, man, I'm in the presence of, of, of a genius. Come on, go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. But yeah, came back to her, told her I wanted to open up my brokerage account. Again, the account you use in order to invest and trade yourself without having to rely on a broker or a fiduciary. And when I came back to her and told her that, then she saw that I was actually serious about learning this and I was gonna put in the work to learn this. And I, it was truly something I'm passionate about. It was mainly the money part, but I am passionate about the stock market. Right. And a, at the time she did know a little bit about investing, but she really didn't get too deep with it herself. So, well, we decided to take a course. And we took the course together. Um, I didn't really understand the information. Well, not necessarily the information, but more so the terminology that was used in the course. I did understand the concepts, but not the terminology. So mm -hmm. I didn't understand that. And I kind of fell off towards the end of the course. So she finished it up, came back to me, oversimplified the information, and just really just broke it down um, by using certain analogies, like by using football, school, things I can relate to. Because that's, the, I would say, the thing about 
kids is not that we necessarily can't understand or process certain information. It's more so t the terminology we don't understand. So if you break it down a certain way, it's easier for us to well, understand and learn the information. So she did that for me, and well, that's how we got to where we are now. So did your mom have any investment background, entrepreneurship? Yes, she did have an entrepreneurship um, background. She has started several businesses and been successful in those. But as far as investing, no, a 401k, that's about it. Right. So when you showed interest, mom picked it up and said, okay, I got something here. He's serious about it. So that made your mom want to learn more about it. And then so she dug into it and started doing research and she helped guide you along the way in, into the yeah. world. And then, yes. what was, so what's the first trade that you made? The first trade that I made was on, well, the company was Microsoft. And I believe I made about $150 from that trade. So that was my first trade. And then my first investment was Amazon. So your first trade, how old are you? I believe I was about nine years old. Good God. Man, man y'all don't understand, man. I'm tripping. I'm over here tripping. So you made your first trade at nine, and you made your first investment at what age? I made my first investment also at nine. Yeah, all of this happened within around the same time frame. So you're in the what, fifth grade, fourth grade at the time? Yeah, about fourth grade, third to fourth. So everybody else is interested in playing games while your friends are playing games and kicking it and hanging outside and playing and stuff and wanting to go uh, kick it with their buddies. You're at the crib and you're on the computer watching the numbers. Yep. You following the bread. Oh man, this is this is absolutely amazing, man. Uh fam, when I saw Christian, uh, I can't remember whose whose uh IG I saw. I saw you on somebody's IG and I was like floored like anybody else that would see your story and to hear you talk, like the way you communicate, you communicate like a seasoned person who's in their 20s, 30s, 40s or something, 50s, like you got the vernacular all the way down. And I can, I was watching you, I can't remember exactly what it was, but I was like, oh yeah, his critical thinking game is down too, because, uh, you know, uh, somebody said something, I can't remember what it was, but I just remember you correcting him, like, you didn't try to, it wasn't like you was on purpose, they trying to correct him, you just clarified and I was like, ooh. <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah, he, he on it, boy. He ain't just, he's not some dude, it ain't nobody behind him with a key turning his back. He understands what he's doing. So how many businesses do you have right now? So right now I mainly have, well, one business, but I guess you could say I have, well, I do have more than one stream of income. Like the stock market is one of the main things that I do, but I do well, do other things. And actually, before I even got into the stock market, I actually, well, I guess it would be considered my first stream of income was writing my own book. And this was at, well, eight years old, and I was in second grade. Okay. <laughs> second grade, you wrote your first book. <laughs> yes, sir. Now, I'm sure to, the, to you, None of this sounds amazing to you. I mean, I'm sure because this is all this is all you know. This is like, like just a nat something natural to you to do. But to us, I know. Does it ever surprise you when grown folks, you know, like people like me, are uh, like just overwhelmed with your progress and the, the information that you have inside of your head? I would say not anymore. It did um, initially because I thought it was just normal. Yeah, but. Now I've kind of gotten a little used to it. I'll admit that. <laughs> yeah. How, how do you get people, especially black people, to get over the hump of being afraid to invest? I would say really getting over that hump is showing them that it is possible. And I mean and that, that I can do it. Yeah. Can you say again? Yeah. I, I, want to just, I just want to clarify the stock market, invest in the stock market. Yeah. 
So, again, just really showing them that it's possible and that a 13-year-old, 9-year-old, 10-year-old can do this. An adult should definitely be able to do this. And it has been a skill that we haven't had access to for a long time. Mm -hmm. So it's just a matter of, well, picking up the ball and running with it and begin teaching our own how to do it because it really just allows you freedom because it allows you to employ your money. And, of course, your money will always work harder than you ever could in business, um, playing sports, in anything. Your money will always work harder for you. So it's really just about showing them that it is possible and showing them the correct skills to doing it so they can begin, well, employing their money and having them, having them make their money, make more money for them. Right. So it's really about showing them, well, yeah, that it's possible. So if, if someone was to, like, want to, you know, get, get involved, and I'm trying to pin this, pin your uh, comment right quick. Uh, not your comment, but pin your name up there so everybody knows who I'm talking to. Uh, and I spelled investor wrong, but hey, y'all, y'all figure it out. But anyway, um, if someone wants to like learn investing, investing in stocks, they come to you and they say, "Hey, uh, Christian, you the truth. I know you're gonna tell me the truth. You know, how do I get in, man? What do I do? What's the first step?" So I'll say the first step is to well, actually have kind of like a system that I base, well, learning how to invest and trading off of. And it's actually, well, based off my nickname, Truth. And this mm-hmm. is the main system I'm walking people through. So it goes like this. T, tap 20 companies that you like and that you already buy from. So before you can already, well, before you can get started with investing or finding what companies you're going to be investing into, of course, you need to do just that. Find what companies you're going to be investing into, not only just for investing, but if you're a trader, also trading those companies. So you want to find those first. In my course, we call this your circle of 20. And again, your top 20 companies. So these would be like your Microsofts, your Apples, your Teslas, companies like those. And you can add them to your circle of 20 so you already know what you're getting yourself into. Then next, of course, you have R. You got to research those companies thoroughly. Because, of course, before you can invest in a company, you need to know all you well can about that company and how it's performed over the last five years, over the last 10 years, over the last, well, just year, and just really see how the company has performed to make sure it's a solid and consistent company. Then you have you understand the historical data behind those companies. Again, it's really just about, well, actually, I say this. Companies have patterns. So it's a matter of finding those patterns and, of course, almost like memorizing those patterns. And once you master those patterns, it almost makes the company predictable because, of course, you know how it's going to move in the morning, in the afternoon, later on in the day before the market closes. You already know how it's going to move. So you can put yourself in the best position in order to make the most amount of profit. Then you right. have T, trade after closing. So this is more so a personal rule for me. And this is more so for swing trading. I'll explain that, what that is later. But let's say I see a setup for a potential trade for Microsoft. And it's around, hmm, let's say, 2 2 p.m., 3 p.m., 3.30. It's around that time. So it's later on in the day, right before the market closes. So I'm not about to try and get Microsoft right now. I'm about to wait for the setup and see what what happens tomorrow. So I'm going to let the market close. I'm going to check the news, make sure I'm putting myself in the best position, sleep on it. Then, especially if I'm investing a lot of money into the trade. So then the next day, when that comes, or the next week, depending on what day it is, um, when the market opens, then I can make the trade as soon as I, well, as soon as possible. Make sure I'm putting myself. I've already made sure I'm putting myself in the best position, making the most amount of profit, and I'm good. Right. And then you have, last but not least, I would guess you could say this is my number one rule: have an enter and exit strategy. That is a must. You have to have that. I know what you want to get it and how you're going to exit. If I want to make $5,000, $10,000 off Microsoft, Apple, or Tesla, or whatever trade I'm doing, as soon as I hit that, let's say $10,000, I'm getting now. I'm not trying to make $11,000, $12,000, because I've had personal experience, and you can hear this even from other traders, that being greedy in the markets will get you killed. And it feels horrible, because it's like you are up, let's say, $500, and you try to be greedy, think it's going to go make you 550 600 
then it goes against you. Now you're only up, let's say, 230 or even in the negative, depending on how far you were up. So you cannot be greedy. Trust me, worst feeling in the world, and it will just kill your account. Greed, and it really just emotions overall. You can't have um, be an emotional trader because I see it this way. So let's say I'm being greedy. Um, I'm being greedy on a trade, right? And I lose a significant amount of money. So now I don't feel as good because I just lost a big amount of money. Now I'm trying to, as an emotional trader, now I'm trying to make that money back. But because I'm trying to make that money back so quickly, because I'm emotional, I'm starting to make desperate trades. And I'm not doing my research. I'm not um, doing the steps I need to take or taking the steps I need to take in order to, well, be successful in the markets. So now I'm making those desperate trades. Now I'm losing even more money. So now I'm feeling even worse. Like it's just a cycle and it's just bad overall. So you cannot let your emotions control you and you cannot be greedy. That's money right there, man. I, you know, I do a lot of uh, Bitcoin investing. So I'm heavily leveraged on Bitcoin. And I made a trade about two years ago. I bought a, you know, I'm saying a trade, but it's, I bought a coin about two years ago. And uh, <laughs> I've been sitting and waiting for it to, to take off, right? So mm -hmm. it, it started to take off about maybe, uh, maybe um, three weeks ago, right? And I was like, whoa, you know, this thing is moving. But I didn't see any other, other coins moving. So I, I, I felt like it was a bull trap. So I'm thinking like, okay, uh, if it gets to this amount of money, I'm just going to jump. I'm going to get out. I'm getting out. So that's what I did. When it got there, I got out. But then it kept going and going and going and going and going. And it's still going. Like in three weeks, it's still going. It's like it has like maybe since I got out, it is probably six or seven X. And I'm like, but at the same time, you know, I'm still satisfied because I, 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 I identified the number, my exit strategy. I was like, this is what I want to get out of. And when I got there and I made a lot of money on it, I got out. But still, man, it be, it be in the back of my mind about that bread I miss, man. I'm like, ah, you know. But, you know, the bottom line is that when you're investing, you know, you want to be at, at the minimum, you want to be in the black even. You know, you don't want to lose any money. So anything, if you gain a dollar, that's a win. Yeah. Right. So has anybody ever taken your advice and uh, it didn't work out for them and they got mad at you because perhaps they, they didn't really, because ultimately the bottom line is no matter how you advise them, the last decision, the final decision is theirs. And I know you put that disclaimer out there. You say, look, man, this is not me telling you what to do. I'm just telling you what I do. And if you want to do that, that's fine. <laughs> you know, yeah. but when somebody like follows what your pattern and it don't work out for them, like have anybody ever came to you like and, and got mad at you? Like want to ride on a 13 year old? Like, man, where you at? I'm going to get you. <laughs> Um, I will say, well, yes, that has happened. Um, it's rare, luckily, but that has happened maybe about mm, once or twice. And we talked them down, um, helped them get back to where they were, recover that lost money. And it's just a matter of, and this goes for trading and investing overall, just accepting those losses and that you made a mistake. Now it's just a matter from, well, learning from that mistake and see what you did wrong, how you can fix it and how you can become better. Right. Right. Fam, if you're just not joining, I am talking to a genius. Man, I'm talking to a young CEO. Listen, when you say young CEO, man, I'm talking about 13 years old, uh, an investment wizard, 13 years old, got in the game when he was eight. Self-taught, eight years old, got in the game. We're talking about, I'm talking to a Christian, the truth, Jones fam. Write that name down. I can guarantee you that he's going to be on the big stage real soon. Have you been on? I'm sure you've probably been on a few big stages already, right? Have you? Yes. Uh, I say I had have 
well, I've had the pleasure of speaking with, well, let's say some of the best motivational speakers on the planet, right. Mr. Les Brown and the hip hop preacher, Mr. Eric Thomas. Oh yeah, yeah, that's two of the best. I mean, that's that's, that's top of the pyramid, you know, like <laughs> that's both of them at the very top, and it's going like this. That that's that's good, man. That's good. Did they did they like? Is is there anything that one of them or uh, both of them share with you that that you can share with the audience? I would say, not technically directly. Mm -hmm. Well, I said not technically, not directly, but I would say indirectly. It's really just a matter of monetizing your gift, and this just goes for them being as great as they are in the speaking industry and as big as they are in the speaking industry. Really, how they well, took what they were great at and monetized it again. Yeah. Monetizing your gift, I believe, is one of the most important things that you can do, even for yourself. Um, becoming a rapper, you monetized your gift, and now look where you are now. Right. So it's just a matter of finding what you're great at, not what you're good at, but what you're great at, and figuring out, well, how you can make money off of that. Because my belief has always been, if I'm great at something, let's say I'm great at speaking in their case. Of course, normally when you're great at something, you're going to love doing that. So you never really feel burnt out. You can always improve. You always have a passion and love for that thing. Now it's just a matter of figuring out how I can monetize that speaking or my gift at speaking. So that would be getting on stages and booking, well, speaking engagements at high schools, at conferences, at whatever, and really just, well, making money off those speaking engagements. So it's about finding your gift, figuring out how to monetize it, and then last but not least, what I believe a lot of people don't do is take action. Mm -hmm. You've got to take action on anything you do or you will not be successful. That, that's just the game. You will not be successful if you don't take action. That's what, like, here, I'll put it to, to you this way as well. So I have a system I like to call GPA, right? It's not called, well, grade point average, but it goes like this. Have a goal. Have a plan and take action. So we're going to break down G first, right? So having a goal. So you want to make sure you have a goal and not a project. What's the difference between a goal and a project? A goal, you have absolutely no control of. That would be, a goal would be like me wanting to sell a million dollars worth of hoodies uh, online. I have no control over who buys my hoodies. However, a project, you have 100% control over. So a project would be like me setting up my website or getting the hoodies made or manufactured, um, finding the shipping, whatever. That would be a project. I have 100% control over of doing all of those things. Now, of course, those projects coincide with my plan. Now, it's just a matter of planning them out, mapping them out, seeing where I can get my hoodies manufactured with a certain um, material or whatever, where I can get my website made and just planning everything out, setting up your projects or your milestones to get to your goal. And then last but not least, again, taking action. Because you can do all the rest, but if you don't use A, you won't be successful. Right. Man, that, that is an earful right there, man. That was a word. This man just broke down the difference between a project and a goal. Man, that's money right there. <laughs> I love it. I love it. How well do you do in school? What's your grades? I like? do pretty well. For myself. Uh, straight A's and sometimes A's and B's. Right, right. Do you ever get bored in school? Are you sitting in school, like, tell the truth, are you sitting in school sometimes trading? <laughs> um, well, not in class, not in class. Right. I might do it when I'm walking in between classes, but not in class. Nah, I get right. my phone taken away. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's good. Are any of your friends around your age trying to get you to help them invest? A couple of them, a couple of them, and a couple of them are learning right now. And it has been a process, to say the least. But I believe with time, patience, and of course, consistency, you'll get it. Right, right. And the big question I think everybody want to know is, are you a millionaire yet? Yes. Yes, I am. Look at that. Look at that young CEO, that young CEO. What's your end goal? 
So I would say, well, I want to say just and goal, but well, there's a couple of them. Let's say that. All right. So 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 what what are what are yeah? So give me a couple of the the big in goal, goals that you see going forward, things that you like looking at. And you say, man, I, that's why I'm aiming for that right now. All right. So I would say my next big project I'm going to be working on. You'll be seeing me executing within the next. Let's say five to ten years. Mm -hmm. So we're going eighteen to twenty-three. Okay. So number one, opening up my own hedge fund and becoming a hedge fund manager. Okay. Number two, opening up my own sports agency, specifically a sports agency that allows athletes to take their money they're making from sports and of course invest that money or have traders trade that money and basically employ their money. So after all those years of hard work just to even get to that level, they're not making, well, financially dumb decisions and basically spending all their money or not having enough of it by the end of their career. Again, after all those years of hard work, they're not going broke and ending up back at square one where pretty much everyone else ended up. And they, again, all those years of hard work and dedication it took just to reach there, just for it to be temporary. Now you want to be rich. You don't want to be rich. You want to be wealthy. So really just show them how to become wealthy. I would say the next thing, of course, get into real estate. I can't technically buy real estate myself right now, but it has been something I've always been interested in. Specifically, I'll admit luxury houses. Uh, <laughs> and then next would have to be reinvesting back into my community, as well as reinvesting back into Africa. And I'll say what part of Africa, again, it is a continent, um, right now, more so looking in the Western region around Ghana, Gambia, Nigeria, around those areas right now, I could expand to other regions and I'll probably will look at the East, North and well, South. But right now I am looking mostly at the West. I can see you doing a lot of things in the tech world also, you know, and, and that tech world, I mean, that's your world. That's your generation's uh, yeah. this is what this is where your generation can bridge the gap uh, heavily in the tech world. And this I'm talking about it's ridiculous money in the tech world. Right now, the tech world is one of the few worlds that's uh, that are winning during this pandemic. So uh, you know, don't 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 uh don't just totally like ignore that tech side. Because uh somebody like you, man, I can see you going real far in that tech world. You know, talk about really? talk about some billions. Yeah, I can see that. When you talked about uh, helping athletes, what percentage of money do you think that, uh, or what percentage of that money do you see pulling off to the side and, and, and them investing? Well, I would say as far as taking the money, as far as percentages, yeah. um, I yeah. say I did get this. You wanna, cause you, I'm sorry to interject, but I just want to be clear. Because, you know, with, with investing, you don't want to take all your money and invest unless, you know, like all your money is 100 bucks or something, you know. But if you're making millions of dollars, you don't want to take your whole million dollars or your whole $10 million and put it in one place. Like you say, you want to diversify, right? So, uh, and, and then you, because you, you want to have a certain amount that you're going to use to, to pay your bills, a certain amount that you're going to save, put in your savings, and then you have a certain amount to to blow and then a certain amount to invest, right? Yes. What what so, yeah, what that what does that percentage look like to you? Right now, I would say that percentage is looking like, and I did get this from a mentor of mine, the 70-30 mm -hmm. rule. Okay. Where you live off 30% of your money that you're making and then pretty much invest and put in the assets, the other 70% of money you're making. I would say that's more so, for athletes at least, a little more well, temporary. And of course, once they leave the league and they'll have so much money they've made just from their assets alone, they can then maybe take more of that money if they want instead of making it, let's say, 70-30 into like a basically a different percentage. I'm not going to think of the numbers right now. But <laughs> right. Uh, let's say 40-60. Mm -hmm. Okay. I can see that. Those are good numbers. Man, I, I like your drive, man, and I and I like the foresight. I like uh, where you headed uh, from the first time I saw you, man. 
I was I was totally uh, drawn in to your energy. You know, you you speak so so wise. I mean, you're wise beyond your years. Not just speaking, but you you really understand what you're doing. You're not just talking. I mean, like I've heard kids preach, right? And you can tell that they've been they've been coached. Like they'd be preaching. It'd be a little bitty kid, be like ten years old, and, and God, everybody say yeah. What what I say yeah. <laughs> Touch your neighbor, say neighbor, neighbor. You know, you know, it just sound kind of coached, you know, whatever. But. You got it, man. We're going to stay in touch, man. We're definitely going to stay in touch. And I'm definitely going to be hitting you up to uh, talk about uh, some investment ideas that I have. Uh, how can the people get in touch with you? And are there any important words that you want to share? Okay, so I do have a couple of things. But first, I'm going to start with, well, how to get in touch with me. Okay. So you can get in touch with me. Uh, well, you can go to my IG at the top, well, left corner, at the truth. 2024 or my website the truth jones.com mm -hmm. and i would say my last few words will be um uh, the one thing i do want to put out there is i have my own award show called well award show and nonprofit, both under the banner truth playmakers and basically the award show side of it yeah yeah <laughs> thought it yeah the award show. <laughs> side of it is where i honor 17 amazing african-american youth or I guess you could say my peers, we're all in our own different industries. We're all doing our own different things. Like somebody could be a chef, somebody could be a singer, somebody could be a DJ, uh, whatever. We're all in our different industries. And it really just allows us to honor each other and uplift each other and truly become a community and really see how we can build each other. Because, again, we all do our own little thing and we all do something that we're great at. And then also a part of the award show I like to call well, I invite what I like to call VIPs. And actually, before I even, uh, well, no, I'll explain those first. So basically what the VIPs are like the big bosses in the industries and the mover and shakers. And again, it's like a, a award show backslash networking event and really just create a community and space where we can all work together, not only for the short term, but also for us, well, the long, long term. And the last thing I would like to say is Willie D., would you like to be a VIP at Truth Plan Makers for 2021? This guy right here, is a, this guy got it. Hell yeah, man, I'm down. I'm down, man. You know, and you got going on, man. You got me, man. I'm hooked. You know, I'm with you. I'm with you all the way. I support you a thousand percent. I appreciate it, sir. Thank you. I'm, I'm with you, definitely, man. Uh, do you have uh, one other question? Do you have any uh, siblings? Yes, actually, I have one in here right now. <laughs> yeah. um, but she doesn't want to come on camera but I do have siblings I got my little sister Bailey Love Jones and she's actually the one that well makes my hoodies and my, all my merchandise All right. and she actually has her own book called Bailey the Self Love Princess right go ahead look that up it's a great book how old is she she is nine years old, going on ten. About what? So August? No, September now. So man, her birthday is next month. Man, that's beautiful, man. That is beautiful, man. And look, parents, uh, you can see when these youngsters, man, when they got it in a man, all all it takes is a little push. There's, you know, just a little guidance, a little push, a little effort, man, and you see what can happen. This is this is beautiful. This is. Man, this is absolutely beautiful. I can't wait to see what else you guys do in the future. Fam, uh, once again, this is Christian The Truth Jones. Follow him on all platforms. Run them platforms one more time. Sure. So my Instagram, again, top left corner. But uh, <laughs> The Truth 2024 and my website, thetruthjones.com. Truthjones.com. The Truth. Just gave your earful and information, fam. If you want to succeed, if you want to achieve, give with the homie the truth indeed. You did? That was a free <laughs> rhyme right there. I know, you know, I ain't supposed to be giving out free stuff, but, you know, every now and then you got to show a little love. You did what I'm saying? <laughs> All right, Young King, till next time, man. I appreciate you. Thank you for having me on. No more talk.
what the haters talking about. <laughs>